fact. <laughs> when most people gear up and hop on a bike. It's fun. But lately for Emma Reed, yep. it's also a lot of work. You can go ahead and get on the bike, yeah. I did participate and I was the first, I think, first completed subject. <laughs> We're going to put this mask on her. She's participating in a study at the University of Oregon in the Oregon Performance Research Lab. And I'm a nerd. I think it's very cool. And yeah, it's a good opportunity to learn and help out. Okay. Each Friday for four weeks, Reed put on a heart rate monitor, muscle oxygenation sensors, and of course, the mask. Yeah, go ahead. Tracking oxygen consumption all while she's biking. She's doing great. Professor Brad Wilkins is trying to find out what Reed's highest exercise intensity is. I basically had like a free maximal exercise test to see what my max capacity is. But that's not the end of the test for Wilkins. And these values are the oxygen, oxygen uptake. This specific study is looking at how hormones fluctuate throughout a month for women as well as for men and how that fluctuation in sex hormones might impact performance outcomes. Right now she's working at 80 watts. That's why Wilkins set the biking exercises over the course of four weeks to align with the length of a typical menstrual cycle. We're bringing them in at that same time period, same time of day, over and over throughout a month. We're measuring hormone levels and then correlating that back to our performance outcomes. So it's a unique approach. We're not trying to fit them into a certain place in their menstrual cycle. Wilkins says this type of focus on the female cycle in athletics is underappreciated. We know so much more about how the physiology of men and how they're able to perform than we do about women. So it's very important to me to try to level that playing field as much as possible. Up to more recently, there has been a lack of studies of female physiology. It's an area where scientific expertise seems to be missing. Anecdotally, um, people are providing training recommendations based on hormone fluctuations, especially for female athletes. Um, I would argue that we don't really have those data yet. We don't really have that, the knowledge that we need to make those recommendations. And that's where this study comes in. Yeah. You can stop, them. <laughs> Wilkins hopes in the future they'll be able to use this information to make those recommendations and help women perform at a higher level. It was great. Just a nice little warm up. <laughs> what we've learned so far is there's definitely not a cut and dry answer. At the University of Oregon, Ashley Grams, KGW News.